We talk football, both kinds of football on the show, and we also begin with homecoming because it's always the greatest weekend in the fall on every college campus, and it will be next weekend at EKU. And Steve Greenwell's with us. Your, your title's so long, we're going to read it. Senior Director of Alumni Engagement and Communication. Um, of all things on campus, I love homecoming the most. I, I assume you agree. It is the biggest EKU celebration of the year every year. And it's on October 19th and 20th. The Colonels play Murray State on that Saturday to culminate the event. But this year, one of the big changes, and a lot of schools are doing that, is moving their parade, and EKU has to Friday evening, a great event for everybody. You're exactly right. We're looking forward to that. Uh, we think there'll be a lot of energy in the downtown area. A lot of the local businesses have kind of uh, decided to leave their doors open or come out to support. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, universities, like you said, making that move because Friday night parades have a little bit more energy to them typically. And folks really want to spend their time tailgating with their friends and their affinity groups that they were part of in school on Saturday mornings. And so we're making a run at that and, and we believe it to be a positive thing. So. And the Richmond Chamber of Commerce downtown having a, a town and gown tailgating in conjunction with the parade. Correct. Parade begins at 6, 5 to 8 on the tailgating. Correct, correct. Yeah, the town and gown tailgate has typically been midday and they've moved that back into the evening again to kind of uh, foster a little bit better. Um, event downtown in the evening. So the tailgate and the parade together should be pretty fantastic. So many things have changed on campus. If you get back and you want to see it and get the full look, uh, tours are being offered on Friday. Correct, yeah. My shop, uh, along in conjunction with admissions, uh, are doing the tours and uh, should be outstanding. It's a great way to learn about why these campus improvements have come about and uh, how they're attracting new students and better quality students as well. There is a young alumni party on Friday night from 9 to 12 at the Paddy Wagon. And then here we come to Saturday, uh, something I couldn't do anymore, but a 5K race. Uh, it's always a tradition, a fun one sure. uh, on Saturday morning. That starts at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, yeah. Uh, so Campus Recreation puts that on like always and uh, a few hundred participants at that like always. That one grows every year and uh, uh, it's, uh, it should be outstanding again this year. And you've put or put it in with homecoming now uh, recognition of, of uh, alumni that have contributed. Correct. And so uh, the alumni awards and pioneer celebration uh, that brunch has been moved uh, on to Saturday morning. It is for the first time this year uh, named after uh, legendary alum uh, J.W. Spider Thurman. And uh, so we're going to have that event and uh, there'll be 15 award uh, recognitions. And then our pioneers are our 50 year graduates. So the class of 68 this year being inducted into the pioneer class. And uh, that should be a good time as well. And then, of course, tailgating before the football game that kicks Always. off at 3 o'clock against Murray State. Uh, anything out in the tailgate area we should look for? Yeah, so uh, there are lots of the affinity groups that are uh, going to have their own tailgates uh, in the Alumni Coliseum. And so you can look out for that. That's uh, in the area kind of adjacent to the baseball stadium. Typically, all that can be found on the homecoming website. There is a specific uh, session for tailgates uh, and so you can check out all of those. The best thing to do uh, if you want a lot of information is to go where to eku.edu? Well, I would say homecoming.eku.edu. That is the official website uh, for homecoming. And uh, you'll see different segments for different people groups. Uh, biannual African-American reunion is this year coming up as well. And so uh, that rolls every two years. And so this is the year on the evens that we'll be having that as well. So. And if you want to get a jump start on homecoming, the uh, the uh, Colonel Corn Roast, which is a, a big event, that's on Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's one of the longest lasting traditions. Uh, and so I've heard uh, corn roast there. Uh, corn dogs, I think, as well is a fun thing this year. Uh, they're giving away some free shirts to uh, students, I know, that are going to arrive. Uh, pep rally, obviously, with uh, coaches and um, uh, president as well. And uh, that rolls into uh, Eastern's Got Talent uh, as well that night. All right, Steve, good to see you. Uh, thanks for all the, the tips on homecoming. Should be a good sure. weekend. If you can do anything about the weather, we would appreciate it. Always like to have nice weather as well. Looking pretty decent already. So. All right, he's already looking at the long range forecast. That's Steve Greenwell. Again, you can get all your specific questions answered about homecoming at homecoming.eku.edu. It's coming up October 19th and 20th. Hope to see you back on campus, culminating with the game between Murray State and EKU. Speaking of the football team, we'll talk with the head coach of the Colonels when we come back here on Inside EKU Sports.
Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with a slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. EKU football heads out on the road this week to play Tennessee Martin down in northwest Tennessee. Eastern Kentucky coming off a loss to Jacksonville State. And you made no bones about it on our radio show after the game. You just didn't play well in any phase of the, of the uh, game. And Jacksonville State played very well. Yeah, we, we didn't coach well enough. We didn't. Uh, we weren't tough enough. We didn't perform well enough. We didn't execute well enough. Um, all of the the above, starting starting with me, starting at the top. You can learn from that, or you can uh, let it fester. So, what is this team going to learn from the loss against Jacksonville State? Well, again, as always, we're a one week at a time team. So, regardless of whether you win or you lose on Sunday, when we have our last team meeting before we hit the field. Um, that one's done, and it's it's to bed. And whether you win or lose, you, you can't let that linger. You have a big victory, and you're all excited about it, and you let that uh, linger into the next week. Your preparation is not what it should be. You have a, a terrible loss like we did, and, and you let that linger into the next week. It, your pre your preparation is not what it should be. So um, that's been our message from day one that's that's how we prepare is Sunday night when we hit the field it's it's on to the next game you know regardless of what happens so that's how it is so that one's done it's in the books and and it is what it is and so we're moving on we've got a sample size of five games we've uh, although we haven't won you know five games we're two and three um, there are four games where there's good to take from you know and and then there's this one that stands out that's different than the other four. And that was our last game. It was terrible. Um, but, but if you look at the other four, whether we won or lost, there was, there was some good things to take from it and some positive things to say, hey, we go out and we perform and, and can clean up a couple things. We're a really good team. And then there's this one that says, gosh, we just stunk. Um, well, I like to think that we're, we're more of the, the bigger sample size of those four where there's a lot of good to take from it. And, and we've done things well on offense, on defense, on special teams, and, and shown what we're we're capable of and now we just got to go out and and perform and and do what we're capable of this coming up Saturday I would assume in some ways your opponent Tennessee Martin is saying the same thing their record says one in four but they lose to Missouri they lose to a team that is currently at the top of CUSA in middle yep. Tennessee they go out and beat then number 21 Austin P 37 to 7 before yes. losing by a touchdown at Murray State they have an off week this past week so they're not a one in four team uh, well, just like we're a two and three team, they are what they are. But they're they're a, they're a very good team. I mean, I, I don't think that their record indicates how good that they are because, as you said, I mean, they, they played two very good FBS opponents. One of them an SEC program, a team at the top of another conference. So, uh, and they did some good things in those games. They really did. Uh, and then they're very competitive in the other games. They, they lose to Chat in a very tight ball game. Uh, they came out on fire in the second half uh, against Austin P, which was a tight game at that point. But then and they really pulled away in that one. And um, they had a rough start to their Murray State game, and, and but showed that they're what they're capable of in the second half, almost pulled a comeback on that one. So uh, they're a good team, good on both sides of the football, do some things on special teams that are certainly uh, uh, a handle, uh, a lot to handle. So they're a very good team, and we got to have a great week of preparation. Spotlight a couple of guys on offense and talk about him. Number three, Wynn Dresser is their quarterback. He throws for almost 271 yards a game, and he has a really good receiver. Number 81, Trey Williams with 41 catches. Another big target at 6'4". Yes, uh, the, the quarterback, he, he's got plenty of arm talent. Uh, we saw him last year as a true freshman. Uh, they had enough trust in him to put him in there as a true freshman. Uh, did a very nice job against us a year ago. You can see his maturation. He's, he's uh, able to run around. He extends plays, but he's really a thrower. I mean, uh, he, he makes things happen with his arm, that's for sure. Uh, they've got a couple receivers in the, in the top 10 of the OVC standings for receptions and receiving yards. So they got some talented guys. I think they're big and physical up front, and, and they've got – three running backs that, that they've used that are all very, very good um, backs. 
Last year, EKU won at home against Tennessee Martin 31-21. You were plus three in turnover margin, held them to one of 11 on third down conversion. So good elements to the game. And Daryl McCluskey had 137 yards rushing and a touchdown. Be good to get that running game back on track this week. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, a year ago, we were obviously pleased with the performance on that day. Uh, new year, new season, new people out there. Uh, we've got to go out and, and get a great plan together. Uh, we've got to go out and have a great week of preparation and, and um, put our best foot forward on Saturday. All right, good luck against the Skyhawks on Saturday, Mark. Thank you, Stats. All right, that is Mark Gelder talking about EKU football. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the 13th class of the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame, now over 130. 30 members and four teams of distinction. And in this latest class, a legendary coach and athletics trainer who had a career with a baseball legend, two football All-Americans, a baseball, basketball, and softball player, and a track sprinter. We'll talk to one of them when we come back. At EKU, you'll learn to take a broader view of your world. But we also understand it's the details that shape the big picture. So go ahead, play with fire, think on your feet, or touch the sky. Here, you'll be a part of something new, something big, something beautiful. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. EKU football great Jeremiah Bell goes into the Athletics Hall of Fame here at EKU. Played 11 seasons in the NFL as well after his career at EKU. I want to go back to the start. You didn't come right out of high school at George Rogers Clark in Winchester and go in to EKU. Uh, right. Tell me about that. Uh, well, it all started when I started, I got out of high school and uh, didn't know what I wanted to do. So, um, you know, I got odd jobs here and there. And then finally I settled on one. And I started working in a steel mill. And um, honestly, it, it was a great place. I had a lot of great coworkers, got some really good friends that I still talk to from there. Uh, but it was one of those things that I knew that you know I didn't want to do the rest of my life. So you're watching the Roy Kidd show on television. Danny Thomas from your hometown's there. Yeah. Kind of tripped the trigger, huh? Yeah, it tripped the trigger. I mean, I, I love the Roy Kidd show. Um, you know, I had been watching it every Sunday. I think it came on at 12:30. And, um, you know, I was just sitting there one, one Sunday and I was thinking, like, I don't want to work in a steel mill for the rest of my life. So um, I'm watching this show and I see Danny Thomas making play after play and Coach Kidd talking about him. And I'm just thinking, like, you know, maybe I can do that. So, you know, that's how the whole uh, me coming to EKU and walking on things started was Danny Thomas on the EKU Roy Kidd show. So he walks on to the EKU team. By your junior year, you have six interceptions, and you're the player of the year in the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, then something really tough happened to you. He had a really serious knee injury. I did. I, um, I was playing basketball um, at the park, something I had been doing you know, every day. Um, but it was probably two weeks before camp started. And uh, just playing over there, went up for a layup, and I came down, and I heard a pop, and I knew something wasn't right. And um, I ended up going to the Clark County Hospital, uh, you know, getting x-rays and MRIs. And it turned out that I had tore my patella tendon. And, uh, you know, it caused me to miss my senior year. But it didn't cause you to end your dream. You get drafted six round by the Miami Dolphins. And by the end, you have spent 11 years in the NFL, including times with Arizona and the Jets as well. Uh, and I know you made the Pro Bowl one year. That had mm -hmm. to be a defining moment. It was. It was, it was a great moment for me. Um, that, w that was a moment that I had probably worked my whole career for. Um, just knowing how hard I worked, 
that was kind of a validation for me, uh, just knowing that I had made the Pro Bowl and that, you know, I was one of the best players at my position, you know, in the highest league um, that you can be in. So uh, for me to reach that, I mean, that was, that was really a defining moment. You wore number eight at EKU. How do you want Colonel fans to remember you? Um, as that guy, just number eight. I mean, I was, uh, you know, that guy who was all over the field. Um, I gave my all every game. I gave my all in practice. And I just wanted to be the best I could be. Coach Kidd gave me an opportunity to come here and play, and I didn't want to let him down. And uh, just for him giving me that opportunity, you know, I vowed every day to work my butt off and go out there and give him everything I had. So I think you've already answered it, but what did being a member of the EKU community mean to you, Yarmai? Um, It was great. I mean, it, it, it's just like the slogan that we used to go by, it's a matter of pride. Um, you know, it was great just to be here, you know, with all the coaches, the players, um, get to meet some great people, um, the opportunities that I were given, um, things like that. I mean, I would, wouldn't change it for anything. I mean, it was a great experience. Um, love Coach Kid to death, you know, love all my coaches, but this was a place for me. It was like a sanctuary. Um, you know, I finally got to do what I wanted to do for so long and, and play the game of football and just get out there and run around, and it was enjoyable. Congratulations on your induction. Well deserved. Thank you. Yarmaya Bell, now in the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. We talked the other sport known as football to many. That's soccer, EKU women's soccer, getting a big win on Sunday, 3-1 over Belmont down in Nashville. One of the stars of that game, Sarah Owusu, a redshirt freshman forward with us. You got the first goal in the game, the one before the lightning delay. Talk to me about that one. Um, it was a great pass from my teammate, Idalis Ray. Um, I was open, everyone was attacking her, and I was just waiting for the ball to come. She made the pass, I took the touch, and it was in the back of the net. Fifth goal of the season. Now EKU's up 1-0. There's a huge weather delay. You go up 2-0. And then in the 73rd minute, Belmont takes the lead and cuts it in half. But five minutes later, EKU responds to put the game on ice. That had to be important because I know you guys were feeling the pressure of a needed win. Yeah, after they scored that, that goal, um, it was definitely, it definitely calmed the team down when Kylie scored that goal because we needed to secure the win for sure. So that definitely put us at ease when she scored. The coach said you made changes mm -hmm. going into that game. What, what changed? Well, we had some players, we had defenders playing striker, we had strikers playing in the midfield. So it was kind of, a, um, we switched around a lot of positions just to see how we could change going off of the loss um, with Austin P. So just to switch some things up. Early on in the season, there were a lot of 1-0 games or 2-1 games, and then these last three games have been explosive scoring games, two of them to, to your side of things. And mm -hmm. Let me go back to the last home game against Moorhead State. You guys win in double overtime. You get the golden go goal 4-3, to three, uh, and you had left the 3-0 lead on the table and were – backs against the wall, so yeah. that had to be a huge goal. Yeah, that was, I had to just stay calm in that heat of the moment and just finish it off because double overtime is not easy to play at all. You last year played five games and then got injured. Mm -hmm. It's tough for an athlete and a student athlete to deal with an injury and not be able to play. How tough was it your first year at college? It was, it was definitely rough. Um, all I could do honestly was be the best cheerleader I could be for my teammates and deal with my injury on the side. Um, but yeah, I just looked forward to coming back and playing with my team each and every day. And I'm just trying to put in all the work that I didn't, wasn't able to put in last year, put it in this year. You're from the Toronto area. You were telling me early, early as a child, mm -hmm. you weren't playing soccer. You were doing what? Dance. Yeah. And so dance got too expensive, you thought. And so off to soccer you go? Yeah. Expensive, competitive and soccer is just the next best thing. So. Is it, is it the sport you love now? I mean, do you love to play it and why? I do. It's, it's one of my biggest passions. Um, I feel like on the soccer field, you can be anybody who you want to be. And it's just a place where I can express myself and 
be myself 100%, so that's why I love it. You got a long way to go in school. I mean, you're not an upperclassman yet, but uh, what, what are you majoring in? What's your, what's your future? What's your goals? Uh, my major right now is criminal justice. I plan on minoring in business um, in the second semester coming up. I plan on going to law school after my four years here and see wherever life takes me after that. I love people that have a plan, and Sarah Owasu certainly does, and the plan for EKU is to keep it going when they play home games. Friday against Jacksonville State, that is a 4 o'clock start, and then a 1 o'clock start Sunday against Tennessee Tech. Yeah. You're in the mix. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're currently 7th, but one less game, the four teams barely above you. So you know this is an important weekend. What's Coach told you about it? Um, just like any other game, go out there, put in your 110% on and off the soccer field and practice, and let's just secure those wins because those two wins this weekend are going to be very crucial. All right, Sarah, great talking to you. Good luck to you and the rest of the, the women on the soccer team. Thank you. And again, it's Jacksonville State at the EKU soccer field on Friday, 4 o'clock start, and then first touch at 1 o'clock on Sunday against Tennessee Tech. We'll take next week off, be back in two weeks here on Inside EKU Sports. Keep up with Colonel Athletics by liking and following our pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, go Big E.